Liz Appleby is a comedic writer and performer. She grew up in Florida and said as a child she loves telling stories and performing skits with her friends. She began sharing stories publicly when she performed a one-woman show in San Francisco in the late 90s. Hmm. Now she performs stand-up psychiatry. <laughs> it's her brand of storytelling. She gives us a warning with her performance, like a TV drug pres prescription commercial. <laughs> All attempts at normalcy have failed, so please bear with her as she guides you through the rugged terrain of her mind. Right. When she's not telling stories or riffing, Liz actually shows up for a totally serious job as a presentation skills coach and an ESL instructor for international clinicians and researchers at Har Harvard Medical School. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when asked about the importance of sharing stories out loud with community, what Liz shared as a quote is, for me, sharing stories aloud is a uniquely alive experience filled with moments of unpredictability. One such moment occurred last year when a huge dog leapt out of the audience and started barking wildly at me. I guess it was something I said. So please give a warm welcome to Liz Appleby. My only goal is that you like me, okay? So <laughs> let's not even begin unless I can see a show of hands that you will love me no matter what. Okay, okay, so I can totally fail, right? Stand up psychiatry stories that say what you won't. All right, thank you so much for having me. And I thought I'd start out this morning um, with some Shakespeare, you know, to be or not to be. That is the question, except it isn't. No, guys, it really, really isn't. Not for me. No, I figure at this age, at this age, look, like it or not, I am. Now, the question for me is which one? You know, which one am I? Which self? Yes, I see the stillness. I know. I know, and, and, and you're wondering, which self, wait a minute, wait a minute, how has this woman been allowed in the room <laughs> that I have and the doors are all shut? So let me, <laughs> let me just say this, guys, you know, look, we're not that different. I mean, all of us play multiple, we all have multiple aspects, right, right, to our identity. I mean, in any one day you may play different roles, like one day, you know, in any day we could, you could be a parent, a child. You could be Chinese, Jewish, African American, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> I didn't think so. Now, see, in any one day, I might become those things, whereas you would probably remain you. Uh, like after having tea with someone Chinese, you probably wouldn't start feeling Chinese. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't start saying things in Chinese, right? I would. <laughs> I would, and, and you know, it's been this way my whole life, guys. You know, taking on the qualities of whomever I'm around, and it's like a form of empathy. You know, psychotic empathy. <laughs> and looking back, and we're talking really back, at looking back at my life, I, I can see that it makes a lot of sense because, see, growing up, the main message for me was to fit in. You know, as my father used to say, he'd say, let me do it how you said it. Liz, <laughs> Liz, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. <laughs> my problem was I could never figure out who the Romans were. <laughs> you know, to me, everyone was the Romans. You know, so whomever I was around, that was who I'd become. And as crazy as it sounds, it, it wasn't hard to do because, see, growing up in the South back then, it was very hard to be who I really was, which was <laughs> 
you know, or as my mother used to say, there's nothing wrong with being. Jewish. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being Jewish. And let me just, this is why these notes are here, because of senior moments. There's nothing, mom, what did you say? There's nothing <laughs> wrong with being Jewish. And it was equally hard, guys, to be, yes, yes, I'm 80 now. It was equally hard to be who I sort of felt I was, which was African American. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I won't even go into all my, my different moves. <laughs> but the reason I could feel African American was because the woman who brought me up, Doris, was African American. You know, and I spent all my time with her. I came to live, she came to live in our house when I was two. And, you know, I adored Dodie, as I called her, and I followed her everywhere. You know, we were always talking and laughing and telling stories, you know. But look, I wasn't African American. You know, so I wasn't African American. I, I wasn't Jew really Jewish. Uh, I wasn't a wasp, you know, who was left. Everyone else. <laughs> so I, I'd be around someone who's speaking Spanish, and I'd start to kind of feel Spanish, you know? A little bit like, hola. <laughs> hola, que tal? Hola, que tal? Bien. Hola, que tal? Bien, gracias. Bien, gracias. Hola, que Bien, ah, sí, sí. Luisa tiene el cataro. Oh, ojalá que se mejore pronto. ¿Qué hora es? Es la una. ¿Qué hora tiene? Según mi reloj son las dos. <laughs> and then French started seeping in, you know. Je suis, je, it was felt very different, but it was like, je suis, je, je suis fatigué, mais je dois aller au travail. And, and then Italian. <laughs> Oh, capito, anch'io devo andare al lavoro. Ti telefono dopo. Even Japanese. Well, that she was iso gashi des. Arigato. Dao, goza much ta. And, you know, I, I asked Berlitz to come this morning to lead us in an around the world tour of the mental terrain. They said, you're too insane. We're not coming. We're not coming. And you know what? It's a good thing because I have a confession. Don't worry, it's PG. <laughs> Seatbelt, you see this tendency to become whomever I'm around, it, it's not limited to people. <laughs> you, 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 okay, we'll meet afterwards. <laughs> we will really meet afterwards. See, it extends to the animal kingdom. Now don't get worried, okay? PG. I've always felt a very strong connection to animals. And you know, in 1995, I met Teo. It's getting scarier, isn't it? He was a three-quarter wolf, one-quarter dog mix, and he was in need of a babysitter. And his owner was a Vietnam vet, and he had only one question for me. He said, how do you feel about dominance? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, dumb. And I, I thought we'd sort of just, you know, cuddle like, like on a little kitty calendar. <laughs> well, then he takes me to meet Teo. And I'm going to be there 11 days, and I immediately realize how naive my concept of, hey, Teo, let's just love each other. Let's just love each other and be equal. No, no. Teo would require dominance. You know, he'd need to know that I was in charge if I was going to walk out of there alive. <laughs> this woman is, is dating Teo because she's finishing all my lines. It's like, do you own a lion? You had a wolf, yep. Part wolf, part wolf, right, right, okay. Um, walk out of there alive. Um, but see, unlike you, I'm, I'm missing some brain cells. Okay, so I didn't walk out of there alive. Clearly, that's why I'm here. Okay. <laughs> she couldn't walk out alive because her memory, her memory. See, I knew, I knew. I never used to blank out, guys. Okay, wait a minute. Guess what's next? <laughs> Guess what's next if I meant to walk out of there alive because Teo weighed 120 pounds. Yeah, and on his hind legs, seven feet tall. Yeah, see, she's finishing all my lines. This is like a pas de deux. Come on up, and we'll just do a dun 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 dun. I am tell you are tell. Okay, 120 pounds, seven feet tall, and he was magnificent. 
And so my first day of babysitting arrives, and my husband drives me there. Now my husband is a biologist, he's a naturalist, he loves wild animals. And so we pull up on the lawn, it's Plymouth, and there sprawled out in complete wolf-like splendor is Teo. And my husband says, do not get out of the car. <laughs> Never approach an animal that weighs more than you do. So I get out. <laughs> and I walk towards Teo, who falls onto his back and in this puppy-like glee. He's squirming like a little worm. And I, you know, I just dive down, I join him. And there we are, we are wrestling, you know, it's hand to hand, paw to paw, snout to snout. And my fingers, they're just, you know, interlacing amongst his three-inch fangs. I could never do this today. And there's playing, you know, it's Jane Goodall. It's Jane Goodall does canines. You know, because Teo is a canine, but you know what, guys? He's not a dog. And this becomes incredibly clear when after a couple of days of being with him, I get a phone call. And it's from a friend of mine whose specialty is to inject life and death crises into the conversation. <laughs> The moment she senses we're about to hang up. So we've been, we've been on the phone like half an hour, and there's Teo. He's laying patiently at my feet. My friend is going on. You know, it's about her latest boyfriend. But Lizzie, I don't know if he's really being honest or not. And I happen to look down, and I see someone who really is being honest. <laughs> honestly hungry. Honestly angry. Honestly not a dog. He's staring. I need dinner. And it's you. <laughs> I hear my friends still talking, but Lizzie, I mean, I think he really might be sincere. Oh, he is. He's very sincere, you know. <laughs> He's very sincere. And, but on the other hand, Lizzie, and that's the hand with which I drop the phone. <laughs> and I look at Teo, who's just a sweet little puppy, aren't you, sweetheart? And I say to go towards your bowl, yes, sweetheart, yes, 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 just I love you. Are you being sincere? I think you're being really <laughs> sincerely hungry. And I fill his bowl, don't I? Yes, I do. Fill it full. Yeah, very full. <laughs> very full. Well, guys, every day with Teo was an adventure. One day, we go down to the beach. And, um, oh, I'd been warned, you know, never let him off his leash and collar in public. Well, of course, you know. So we're, we're at the beach, it's Plymouth, and we're walking down the sand, and we're about to go in the water. And I look out, and I see this little girl, she's like three, and she's splashing around in her little swim tube, and she's saying, doggy, doggy, doggy. <laughs> and so I go to grip Teo, you know, who's not there. <laughs> he slipped out. And in my hands are just the leash and the collar. And I look out, and there he is. He's paddling madly towards her. And she's saying, doggy, doggy. He's going faster and faster and faster. And it's turning into a little red riding hood, you know, the, <laughs> the, the marine version. <laughs> and then time stops. And the next thing I know, I'm in the water. And my arm is coiling around his neck. I'm an instant alpha. The human shield between him and this child. And I'm holding on to him with all of my strength. And I'm struggling to lasso the collar around his neck. And the little girl, she's still saying, yuggy, yuggy, and struggling to touch him. He's trying to get her, and I hate them both. <laughs> And I finally lasso the collar, and I drag him. And we start to swim, and we're swimming, and swimming, until we reach the shore. You know what? You know what, guys? Now I understand how I feel about dominance. <laughs> well, my last day there, I have a crazy idea. Let's go for pizza.
you know, like a birthday party. I mean, he was three. <laughs> Except he had no friends. <laughs> you know, I couldn't call up like uh, corgis and cocker spaniels. They, they, they wouldn't have fit in the car. It was too small. It was a small Civic. So we get in. I put him in the back. And as we're driving out, he jumps into the front, sitting right next to me, like a date. <laughs> and his head is so tall, it's cresting the top of the Civic. And so we go to the drive through It's a drive through a pizza drive through And I say to the woman there, I say, I'll have, you know, like he's going to order two. <laughs> large pizza, mushroom and cheese on my side, and um, let's see, for him, pepperoni, yeah, sausage, <laughs> and, you know, and any other meats you have. <laughs> no reaction. I mean, clearly she doesn't see that this is a wolf ordering pizza. <laughs> or maybe she thinks he's a very swarthy, macho guy. <laughs> someone, someone that she once dated and is does not want to acknowledge. <laughs> and so we're sitting in the pizza parking lot, you know, and um, we're eating, and he's really enjoying himself, you know. I eat a slice, he eats, he, he's eating slices now. You know, it's so civilized compared to when he almost ate me. <laughs> and so we go home, and the next day, my husband picks me up. The 11 days are over. And as we're driving, you know, we're talking about the experience and it, it, the conversation, it inevitably turns to the here and now of, you know, where are we going to have lunch? And I become acutely aware of turning back into the wife. Mm. Yeah, you know, saying the things, the lines, that that part of me, or that that self says. And I, I think of Teo and the utter ease with which he manages these transitions, you know, wolf to dog to wolf eating me to eating with me. <laughs> and, and so we get to the restaurant and we're waiting for our food, you know. And my husband looks at me and he says, are you aware that you're licking your fingers? <laughs> and I look down and I am. <laughs> I'm licking my paws. It's happened again. <laughs> and I think, oh God, no, another self to integrate, you know? <laughs> Jewish, African American, Italian, French, Spanish, Japanese, and now Wolf! <laughs> and you know, I want to run back to Teo and, and say, how do you do it, you know? Wolf, dog, wolf. And I realize, you know, he doesn't. He just is. You know, he's not sitting at home now thinking, how can I be a more meaningful pet? <laughs> no. He's just sitting in front of his bowl and eating. And I think, hey, I want to make that my goal. You know, to just sit in front of my bowl, all myself's present and eat. Thank you. Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? For the sockeye, memory is destiny. Future and past flowing as one, the same continuum varied tributaries of the same wide ocean. Thus, when seized by the vise of imperative need, as all eventually will be, these fish battle league after league of salted sea to reach the recalled rapids of their native habitat. And there, in the chill fresh home waters of their infancy. Each seeks the sweet, unique scent of its natal stream. 
each meticulously designed to breed, to spawn, to die, to return this one and final time. Thank you. I saw your little sister at the picture show Said you're married to a doctor and you're living in Rome Heard you're hanging out with Clooney, Angelina and Brad By the time she finished talking we were feeling so sad So we went out for a coffee and the truth came out That you got a little baby and you're living at your grandma's house I've been rolling with the Navy, but I'm ain't no more. Yeah, I drank the captain's whiskey, barely made it to the shore. Hey, I heard I made you cry. Feels like tomorrow died when I think about yesterday. Hey, I know I made you cry. Feels like tomorrow died, so I think about yesterday. Well, I finally got to Asia and got a new tattoo and told my brother it's a geisha, but it's really you. Now I see your little baby, she got a nose like mine. You know if I only knew, you know I'd never leave you behind. Hey, I heard I made you cry, feels like tomorrow died, so I think about yesterday. Hey, I know I made you cry Feels like tomorrow died When I think about yesterday and Now I'm living just to live Like I'm living in love Are you living just to live Like you're living in love Can we live just like we live When we were living in love, love, love We could think about it. Hey, I heard I made you cry like tomorrow died when I think about yesterday. Hey, I know I made you cry. Feels like tomorrow died, so I think about yesterday. I kind of remember the name of it. Something about yesterday. Thanks very much. From Linjoy Drive. I'm not from Lynn, wish I'd been, but I'm original sin. I lost my way trying to stay in an Eden of my own imagination. I resist pagination, punctuation, any form of stagnation. A broken nation, a trail of tears. I've outgrown my fears. I'm here to stare in the face of evil and say, what do you got, man? Show me a hand. Flip those cards over. Let's see what's shaking. Fracking, causing quaking. High plains baking. Fierce storms raking the coast. Are you blind or ignorant or worse? Just don't even care. Don't give a damn about breathing particulate and there. And see, I care. I care so much. I drive me crazy. I slip down that slope. I let go of the rope. But then something always happens to give me hope. An elfin smile, a mischievous stare, a sultry look, or a passionate cares and dares me to bear my soul like here. Occupy everything. Fauna. Light blankets, bare frozen ground. And it begins as if by chance, this rebirth starting anew, provided with tenderness and care for what had once flowed freely, had once more withdrawn. Yet deep within our core, closest to our mother earth, we knew we were not without. And by her breath upon our essence, upon our seeds sown long ago, we open and all senses resound, each warmed each awakened to this very space we are within. With so much forgotten, once more we wake, each for the other and for ourselves, rising into fruition in all our glorious wonder by the purest, most unconditional love throughout this grand and wonderful garden. Now we warm and share these gifts each blessed by our own magnificence 
and growing ever into the light. Thank you. Midwinter thoughts. I crawl into bed at the end of each day, hungry for words, and I escape far away. With a book on my chest, I snuggle in deep. I turn page after page, fighting off sleep. The words on the page take me to faraway places. I meet many people and see many spaces. The words come quickly, my eyes skimming fast. Through characters and setting, the story has been cast. I'm far away from winter. The plot has been set. I'm wondering what the outcome is. I don't know yet. My eyelids close for a minute. Deep dreams await. But a few more words now determines the hero's fate. In the deepest time of winter, when the landscape is dreary, my nose is in a book, my mind no longer weary. As a couple, we performed well, defied centripetal force field of mutual life visions, separate realities, career, household, challenge symbiotic couple vision. It's plea for a life within. Too soon for that, you say, Remind that couples live longer. Also, now to follow dance steps, <clears throat> our own separate and together. Thanks a lot.